switch over to uh, 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 how to calculate the critical constant in the van der Waal equation of state means how to calculate the values of A and B because A and B represents the interaction, A represents the attractive interaction, maybe it is weak between the atoms and molecules, B represents the repulsive interaction between atom molecules. So, A and B contains the molecular property. So, molecular properties are encoded in the form of A and B. So, let us calculate the form of A and B. So, we demonstrate isotherm corresponding to the van der Waals equation in figure 3, figure 3 uh, 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 from the theory. Uh, the van der Waal curves gives maxima and minima points which come closer closer with the rise of temperature. That means, uh, just see it, this is maxima minima if, if you are uh, in, increasing the temperature, then uh, this maximum minima will come closer closer and finally, it disappears. Okay. So, uh, here uh, we, uh, we learn two three things, there exists a temperature T c basically which is the critical temperature we will tell it in later at which this kink the maxima or minima in the isotherm disappears. So, another point which is the point of inflection c is called the critical point and the temperature T c uh, which is called the critical temperature this point c. Then you start from this uh, uh, um, van der Waals equation just you rewrite uh, this p plus a by v square into v minus b equal to r t just you rewrite this equation you will uh, uh, get it p v square plus a into v minus b equal to r t v square. Then you rewrite this equation in terms of volume. So, we can write down v q minus b plus r t by p into v square plus a by p v minus a b by p equal to 0. This is a cubic equation. So, for a given value of p and t this is a cubic equation and v. So, v has 3 roots or 3 values. As we know from the theory of algebra all 3 roots may be real or 1, 2 roots are real, 1 in imaginary. So, let us see. So, for a given p and t if t is less than t c critical uh, point. So, it has generally 3 roots v 1, v 2, v 3 as shown in the figure 4. So, the equation of state also gives us important information regarding the critical points v 1 equal to v 2 equal to v 3. So, the maximum minimum points for the van der Waals curve can be determined from the above equation from the equation 21 means uh, from the van der Waals equation 21 uh, uh, by imposing the condition del p by del v at constant t equal to 0. So, this equation will give the maximum points of for the maximum minima for the van der Waals curve. So, if you will differentiate that equation what you will get it del p by del v at constant t if you will differentiate it then you will get minus r t by v minus v whole square plus 2 a by v q. If you will demand this is 0 that gives the critical values. So, if you demand it then you will get t equal to 2 a into v minus v whole square by r v q. This is a cubic equation only below t less than t c the van der Waal equation of the state gives maxima minima in an isotherm, but as t raises uh, t uh, increases beyond t greater than t c this maximum minima this will uh, the, they will disappear. Okay. So, then from the above two equation uh, equation uh, 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 21 equation 21 uh, uh, 21 p and uh, equation 23. So, if you will just substitute the value of p, so we get p equal to if you will substitute value of t in the van der Waals equation which is equation number 21, you will get p equal to a into v minus 2 b whole square by v q. Then from other remaining equation 23 and 24, we get the critical constant for temperature as well as for the pressure which is known as T c and P c. T c you will get to 88 uh, by 27 R b, P 
PC you will get A by 27 B square. So, finally, we are able to determine the critical constant of the Van der Waals equation P C, V C and T C in terms of the Van der Waal constant A and B. Okay. So, that is what P C, T C and uh, uh, V C, T C and P C are respectively known as critical volume, critical temperature and critical pressure respectively. These critical constant have been related by beautiful uh, equation uh, P R T C by P C V C, just we will substitute the values of P C and P C V C. So, this ratio will come up, come about 8 by 3, which is nothing but 2.667. So, this is a very beautiful uh, ratio. So, if you will calculate this ratio uh, for some system namely helium, hydrogen, neon, uh, argon, oxygen, nitrogen etcetera. Uh, you can calculate their values of P C, V C and T C. So, and then take their ratio you will see it will come around uh, 3 uh, to 3.5 range. Uh, compare obviously, it is somehow uh, greater than the ratio uh, which is 2.667. Okay. So, now let me see uh, whether uh, if you will perform an experiment whether that experimental result predicts the experimental result whether it can be predicted with the Van der Waals equation of state or not. So, let me just check it. The Van der Waals equation of state has been uh, applied empirically to study real gases over a wide range of densities and temperature. So, uh, uh, the theoretical curves are shown in this figure, just you see this figure P versus V. Uh, it has been uh, seen for the different values of temperature 13.1 for the carbon dioxide obviously, 13.1 uh, just gradually you are increasing the temperature 21.5, 31.3, 35.5 and after that there are no kinks at 48.1 degree centigrade. So, these can be compared with the experimental curves of Andrew. Uh, which is uh, which is so which is uh, this is the experimental curve uh, obtained by Andrew. Uh, if you, if you want to compare, if you want to compare, so if you want to compare these curves for T less than T C, we see a remarkable divergence or difference between the Van der Waals curve and the experimental curve in one region. So let me see that region. Uh, this is this figure six. From there, you can uh, from there you can see that where the Van der Waal predict uh, predicted curve is PBDS, whereas experimental gives experiment gives a curve PQRS with the discontinuities at Q and R. Just you see it. This is this uh, PBDS. This is this um, uh, this is this theoretical curve and PQRS which is the experimental curve. So, experimentally the portion Q r corresponds to the heterogeneous region, where the pressure remains constant. On the region B d, you see if you will see if you will pressure increases uh, with the volume. So, del p by del v less than 0, then the system cannot be in a stable equilibrium at any point in this region. Hence, this region cannot be in a stable state and we cannot realize this region in practice. This region is not obtained in the Andrews experiment. So, in the region Q B and R D, the pressure decreases with increase of volume del P by del V del less than 0 and hence the corresponding states can physically exist. Okay. So, the region Q B and R D represent a supercooled vapor and a superheated liquid respectively. Thus, we can explain the difference between the theoretical and experimental isotherm. So, the general agreement between theory and experiment is remarkable. However, the quantitative agreement is not expected from such simple theory. Uh, however, uh, Van der Waals equation is the first step to explain the deviation from the ideal behavior. 
Anyway, in this context, uh, I should tell uh, the I should give uh, the uh, simple explanation of Q V and R D. This can be understood in a much rigorous theory of Hess transition, which is known as the Babulnik equation theory. In the Babulnik equation theory uh, tells, let me tell you. Suppose you want to study the phase transition of liquid uh, uh, water to steam. So, you take the water as a system, then you gradually increasing the temperature. As we know, uh, as from our common sense that as soon as uh, T uh, will uh, reach at T 100 degree centigrade means critical temperature, then uh, this um, water uh, will start to uh, converted, uh, water phase will be started to converting to uh, the steam phase. But what happens exactly? Uh, first order phase, as you know, this is a first order phase transition. First order phase transition is not an instantaneous process. What will happen? As you increasing the temperature of the water phase around T equal to 100 degree centigrade, what will happen? That some of this uh, uh, steam bubble will, uh, because of the local fluctuation, because of the local thermal fluctuation, some of the steam bubble will produce, and then they will started to grow, and finally they will collide each other, and then coalesce each other and form the bigger bubble, and gradually more and more steam bubble will produce and they will collide and coalesce to each other and finally, the total water phase will be converted to the steam phase. So, in this way you can understand the concept of super heat super super heated water or super cool vapor when you understand the phase transition from vapor to water that time it will be super cool vapor. Okay. So, this is this idea. Okay. So, now, now how to calculate the van der Waal constant A B. So, let me start it. A simple and more accurate method of determining the constant A and B is based on measuring the temperature dependence of the pressure of a gas at constant volume. So, let uh, from the van der Waals equation let me calculate del P by del T at constant V equal to R by V minus V as we know R is the molar gas constant. So, then uh, uh, just what is from this equation what is B? B is nothing but the V minus R by del P by del T at constant V. The constant A can be determined from the van der Waals equation which can be written as A equal to V square into R T by V minus V minus P. This is simple from van der Waals equation. Then, sub if you substitute this equation 27, we will get uh, A equal to V square into T uh, del P by del T at constant V minus P. So, where V is the molar volume, which can be expressed as capital V equal to V naught small m by capital M, where small m is the molar mass and m is the capital M is the mass of the gas in the vessel of volume V naught. So, if the gas is taken in a closed vessel of volume V naught and provided with a manometer, the pressure of the gas is measured at different temperatures. From this experiment, a curve P as a function of temperature is plotted, which gives del P by del T at constant V. Then, A and A just you plug in the values of del P by del T at constant V in the expression A and B. So, then you can find out what is A and B. You see uh, in equation A B, which is nothing but the V minus R by del P by del T at constant V. If you will plug in the value of del P by del T at constant V, then you will get B. Similarly, you can get values of A also. So, this is the way you can get uh, the constant A and B. So, now there is other way how to uh, determine a and B from the critical constant just we have uh, told you a few minutes before. The values of A and B can also be obtained from the critical constant of a gas means P C, V C and T C. For a gas obeying the van der Waals equation, the critical constant just a few minutes before I have uh, told you V C equal to 3 B, T C equal to 8 A by 7 R B, 
P c equal to A by 27 B square, just from this uh, you can obtain uh, A and B in terms of uh, P c, uh, T c and P c, A is nothing but the 27 R square by 64 T c square by P c, similarly B is R by 8 T c by P c. So, finally, A and B could also be written uh, calculate determined in terms of T c and P c, because R is a constant we know its value. Uh, from the experimental if you know what is values of P c and T c, then plug in in the expression A and B, we can find out A and B. So, thus uh, uh, to conclude it, A and B can be determined if T c and P c are known experimentally. However, this method is not reliable as the van der Waal equation of state is valid only in the low density region. Values of A and B for some systems are given in the table for your kind perusal, where uh, it is uh, the values are uh, for one mole of system at uh, NTP. So, for the helium, hydrogen, argon, oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide the values of A and B has been uh, these has been tabulated. The van der Waals equation constants A and B are not constant, if you will see they are found to vary with temperature and exactly that is what it is expected from the physics point of view. So, this can be explained from the molecular structure. So, it is now evident that the molecules do not behave as hard sphere as assumed by van der Waals, but have some softness. So, uh, just uh, to check it how A depends on temperature or intermolecular interaction, how. So, naturally the distance of closest approach between the centers of two molecules will vary with temperature and hence B will be a function of temperature. However, uh, A can uh, A uh, just for the constant A, let me write down A uh, from we have already shown the equation 8. 18, where we have written down the expression A in terms of intermolecular potential just to show this is the A actually, this is the A we have told you, this is the A, A is minus 2 pi uh, this thing. So, let me see uh, what is A. So, then uh, values this A is a is minus 2 pi n square k t uh, 0 to infinity 1 minus exponential minus u r by k t r square d r. This is from equation 8, just you please see the equation 8 and this is the a. Just from there it is obvious that a depends on temperature t and it depends on the intermolecular potential which is u of r. So, which shows that a is a function of temperature the explicit dependence of A and B on the temperature cannot be given unless the nature and magnitude of the forces between the molecules are known uh, accurately, uh, because U of R is sitting inside the integration. Until and unless uh, U of R is not known exactly precisely, then you cannot uh, uh, tell what is the exact dependence on of A on temperature. Okay. However, we come to the conclusion that A and B are are function of temperature. Okay. So, now I will spend a couple of minutes on the law of corresponding states. Okay. Let the pressure, so our idea is very uh, beautiful idea is, is there any way to uh, get rid of the, uh, uh, get rid of the uh, arbitrariness of or get rid of the uh, arbitrariness uh, of the A and B of the van der Waal constant. Uh, this is the idea of this law of corresponding states. Okay. Let the pressure, volume and temperature are measured in units of P c, V c and T c and let me uh, define some uh, modified redefined variables P by P c equal to P r, V by V c equal to V r, T by T c equal to T r. Then where P r, V r and T r are called reduced pressure, reduced volume and reduced temperature respectively. They are obviously dimensionless quantities. So, P is nothing but in terms of P c into P r, 
V equal to V c into V r T equal to T c into T r. Okay. So, if you will substitute the values of P V T in the Van der Waals equation, what you will get it? You will get P r plus 3 by V r square into V r minus 1 third equal to 8 by 3 into T r. You see immediately if you inspect that equation, immediately you will feel happy, because there are no a and b are sitting inside this equation. Okay. It is there, but it is not it is it has not appeared directly. You see there are no a and b. So, this equation does not contain the constant a and b, which are characteristic of a system. Therefore, it is a universal equation valid for all substances. This equation is known as reduced equation of state of Van der Waals gas. So, this equation states that if any two of the quantities uh, from P r V r to T r are the same for any two substances, then the third quantity is also same for these substances. So, this is called the law of corresponding states. Okay. So, let me repeat it again. If any two of the quantities P r V r and T r are the same for any two substances, then the third quantity is also same for these substances. So, this is known as law of corresponding states. So, it expresses the fact that by using the reduced parameters, the isotherms of all substances be made to coincide. Not only that, the law of corresponding states can be used to determine unknown isotherms of the gases if their critical constants are known. The law of corresponding states is not restricted to the Van der Waals equation only. Any equation of state may predict the existence of corresponding state, provided the equation contains three constants such as a, b and r. Okay. So, the reduced equation of state may be expressed in terms of other variable instead of uh, critical constant. So, let me uh, look for some other thing. So, let us consider some gaseous system whose molecules interact through a pair potential of this form e of r equal to epsilon f uh, as a function of some uh, new variable r by sigma, where sigma as you know the diameter of the molecule. So, which depends upon two molecular parameter, we introduce new uh, reduced variable defined as p star equal to p sigma q by epsilon v star equal to v by sigma q p star equal to k t by epsilon, which are also dimensionless quantities like p r, v r and t r. So, obviously, you can see k t is the uh, unit of energy and epsilon is the energy. So, these are all dimensionless quantities. Sigma is the diameter of where sigma q has a dimension of volume. So, uh, obviously, from there you see all three p star, v star and t star are dimensionless variables. So, taking this reduced variable in terms of p star, v star and t star, the reduced equation of state may also be written in another form p star equal to as a function of v star and t star. This is uh, due to D Bohr and Michels in terms of uh, uh, p star, v star and t star, the reduced equation of state of Van der Waals could also be written as p star plus a by v star square into v star minus v star equal to n t star, where a star is nothing but a by epsilon, b star is nothing but b by sigma q. Okay. So, there is a printing mistake, I think it is p star plus a star by v star square. Okay. Sorry, please check it, please correct it. So, D Bohr further generalize the law of corresponding state for quantum fluids. The deviation from the classical law due to quantum effects depends on the dimensionless quantum parameter lambda star, which is defined as lambda star equal to h upon sigma into m epsilon to the power uh, 1 by half. So, which is a characteristic of the substance considered. Okay. Then the new law of corresponding states will be uh, a function, it will be function of some other variable lambda star which takes into account the 
quantum correction p star equal to p star as a function of v star t star and further other uh, variables uh, lambda star. Obviously, uh, lambda star equal to 0 limit reduces to the classical law uh, which is nothing but the which where p star is a function of uh, only v star and t star. So, on the basis of on this basis various properties of gaseous elements have been studied these are found to be in fairly good agreement with the experimental result. So, now we are almost uh, at the end of this lecture on uh, Van der Waals. So, finally, to conclude it we should know what are the defects and limitation of the Van der Waals equation of state. Means, the region what are the regions where Van der Waals gives good prediction what are the regions where Van der Waals is not able to give the prediction which are uh, which agrees with the experimental result. So, uh, we know it. So, let me uh, tell one by one. Okay. Although Van der Waals equation of state describes the general features of the liquid gas systems. Uh, so, it is quantitative predictions deviate from the experimental result we consider some important discrepancies below. So, in the region of as we know from the first order phase transition either ice to water or water to gas, we know whenever there is a phase transition obviously, first order phase transition. So, whenever water goes to steam it cannot uh, abruptly uh, phase will be changes from one phase to other phase. It will go some metastable phase or which is known as the coexistence phase, where initially it will be dominated by the water phase, but very less amount of steam phase and at the end of at the end of the phase transition uh, and as the phase transition proceeds, then gradually the steam phase will be more compared to the water and at the end of phase transition it will be purely steam phase. So, this phase is known as coexistence phase, where both phases exist together, where pressure and temperature remains constant during this coexistence region. Okay. So, in the region of coexistence of two phases, the Van der Waals curve differ from experimental curve as we have already seen. For a given substance, the Van der Waals constant A and B must be independent of temperature, it should be However, we know in actual practice the constant A and B vary with temperature. So, third uh, last but not the least according to the Van der Waals equation the critical constant uh, this R T C by P C V C equal to 8 by 3 which is nothing but 2.667, but we know which is a universal constant for all the substance. However, in actual practice we have already seen it changes its value substance to substance. In general, the predictions of the Van der Waals equation is better for light gases than for the heavy gases. Fourth, as we have already told you somewhere, the Van der Waals equation gives the critical values of V, which is V c is 3 V, which is not obeyed experimentally. A more exact values of V c is of the order of 2 times B. So, the Van der Waals equation is only an approximate equation of state. It is expected to provide a better agreement when you compare the behavior at low densities. It never claimed to hold at high densities such as the critical region. Okay. So, now uh, we will uh, just tell how to determine the critical constant uh, experimentally. Okay. Experimentally, the critical constant are characteristics of a as we know I mean, what is the idea motivation to determine the critical constant is that the critical constant are characteristic of a substance, because it changes from one substance to other substance. Their determination is of fundamental importance as they occur in certain equation of state. So, we describe a simple method to determine the critical constant of a substance. Uh, uh, the first uh, uh, how to start it first the liquid is introduced in a hard glass tube of Andrews apparatus connected to a manometer this is the 
Andrews apparatus. So, if you will just see it, uh, then the tube is surrounded by a thermostat whose temperature is continuously changing. The temperatures at which the liquid disappeared and reappeared are noted. The mean of these two temperature gives the critical temperature T c. The manometer reading at the temperature at which the liquid just disappear gives the critical pressure T. So, finally, uh, we got the values of T c and got the values of P c. However, the determination of the critical constant V c is more difficult as a as reason is because if you will change a very uh, change the temperature very small amount, it causes a large change in volume. So, the substance is kept strictly at T c to measure V c. So, uh, uh, K Litet and Mathias use the most accurate method for the determine determination of the critical volume. So, how they have determined? So, the densities of the liquid and its saturated vapor are determined accurately at different temperatures. So, then they have plotted density, they plotted density as a function of temperature. So, the densities of the as you see uh, from this figure, the densities of the liquid and vapor are approaching each other as temperature increases till they become equal at the critical temperature. So, at the critical temperature, the densities of liquid as well as vapor becomes equal. So, this curve A and B, this curve A and B represents a line of mean of the liquid and vapor densities, which will pass through the critical temperatures obviously. So, it is found to be straight line for all substance. So, now let me parameterize it. So, if rho L and rho V be the densities of the liquid and vapor respectively, the equation of this line in this uh, uh, curve uh, density versus temperature can be written as a linear function of temperature, where, where y equal to half rho L plus rho V by 2 equal to which is nothing but uh, alpha plus beta t. So, it looks like a linear relation. So, at the critical temperature, we know the density of liquid uh, should be equal to the density of the vapor. Let us call it is rho c. So, we get rho c equal to alpha plus beta times T c. T should be replaced by T c, because uh, c stands for the critical point. So, where T c is the critical temperature in degree centigrade. So, we determine the densities of the saturated vapor and liquid as near to the critical temperature as possible and draw the rectilinear diameter. The mean of mean density corresponding to T c gives the critical density rho c or the critical volume rho c. So, this method is suitable for ordinary gases which do not attack glass. For substances like water which attack glass, so Caltitate and Colorado used a platinized steel tube to get rid of this problem. Okay. So, now let me uh, tell you uh, gi give you some uh, some idea uh, of uh, some quantities which is which causes the deviation of uh, deviation from the ideal equation of state. If you will see it the uh, first of my uh, first two three transparency where we have written P V equal to R T equal to 1 plus B uh, B P plus C P square plus some higher order terms. At the low pressure only first term will uh, be there and higher order terms will be neglected. So, but uh, exactly even at the low pressure or moderately uh, higher pressure the uh, higher order terms are also there. So, let me see how the higher order terms look like, so that we will feel uh, why there will be deviation from the ideal equation of state. So, let me that is the reason let me estimate the form of second virial coefficient, which is a measure from the deviation of, of, of the ideal equation of state. So, equation of state of a fluid may be expressed in the virial form keeping the second term only P v by R t equal to 1 plus B t by V where B t is the second virial coefficient of the fluid. 
So, the van der Waals equation then can be written as P v equal to uh, R t uh, into by 1 plus a by P v square into 1 minus b by v. So, if you will rewrite it, if you will bring it to the numerator, uh, so what you will see P R t into 1 plus b by v okay, that is minus a by P v square. So, if you will write it again, so R t then R t by v into b minus a by p v. So, obviously from this equation you see that p v equal to R t. So, if you will compare it with this first equation then it gives the values of b which is uh, which is nothing but the second virial coefficient. So, uh, so by comparing it what you will see it. So, v b equal to b minus a by R t. So, the temperature so, from this equation obviously, you see if b equal to 0 or a equal to 0, then it reduces to the ideal equation of state and which is which it should be, because we know uh, a and b are the are cause, uh, a and b causes the deviation from the ideal equation of state. So, the temperature at which b equal to 0 is called the boil temperature T b uh, T b. So, we can estimate the boil temperature T b equal to 27 by 8 T c. The agreement is not satisfactory, the discrepancy is due to the fact that the van der Waals equation does not represent the actual gas accurately. So, which is which, is, which we have told many times that it cannot capture uh, the uh, properties of the actual gases exactly. So, actually the second virial coefficient is nothing but B t is 2 pi n 0 to infinity 1 minus exponential minus u r by k t r square d r. So, from this expression it seems that second virial coefficient depends on a correct knowledge of intermolecular potential. Okay. So, if you will uh, we can write from this equation if you will plug in this form of uh, uh, u of r as we have already told you which is infinity when r less than sigma and uh, it. Uh, uh, so, this form if you will write it then and another if it is u not r when r greater than sigma if you will substitute that form of u r from equation 18 a. So, b t could be written as 2 pi n 1 by 3 sigma q minus sum over i equal to 1 to n 1 by i minus 1 by k t to the power i sigma to infinity u of r to the power i r square d r. So, this indicates that uh, uh, that uh, equation 38 equation 38 let me show you what we are trying to say. So, this equation 38 this equation of uh, reduced equation of state for the van der Waals this reduced equation 38 is an approximation of 41 showing that the van der Waal equation is only approximately true at low density. The second virial coefficient B t has been evaluated accurately for number of potential models means they are people have assumed different kind of potential uh, uh, different kind of intermolecular potential and uh, put the different form of intermolecular potential in the expression 46 and people have calculated numerically or analytically the values of B t. So, then they have plotted with respect to temperature. So, the reduced second virial coefficient B star equal to B by 2 pi q by 3 of the gas with the Lennard zone potential is compared with the experimental values of argon and neon in this figure. Uh, so, this uh, circle represents the argon gas and cross represents the neon gas. So, they have plotted it with the experimental values of argon and neon in the above figure with P star is uh, uh, modified uh, reduced temperature which k t by epsilon. In this case, the boil temperature is found to be a T b star equal to k times T b, which is nothing but the 3.42. So, 
So, uh, uh, that means, we are tried to, uh, we are uh, trying to, uh, we, are, we have been able to understand why there will be deviation and try to estimate uh, the deviation from the ideal equation of state. So, finally, uh, uh, although we have told many times, but finally, the validity of Van der Waals equation of state. So, above the critical temperature, the Van der Waals equation is an improvement of the ideal gas law and for lower temperature, the equation is also qualitatively reasonable for the liquid state and the low pressure gaseous state. However, the Van der Waals model is not appropriate for rigorous quantitative calculations remaining useful only for teaching and qualitative purposes. So, as we have already uh, told you that in the first order phase transition range of P V T, where liquid phase and gas phases are equilibrium. So, as we know that uh, the first order phase transition is defined as uh, where the liquid and uh, the gas phase which are an equilibrium. So, it does not exhibit the empirical fact that P is constant as a function of V for a given temperature. Although this behavior can be easily inserted into the Van der Waals model, the result is um, which is nothing but a uh, Maxwell's correction. The result is no longer a simple analytical model and others such as those based on the principle of corresponding states achieve a better fit with roughly the same work. Okay, thank you.